Welcome to Charter House August 4th Vespers Service. Family of God, what is our story? We are part of God's good creation, created and sustained by the triune God. Family of God, what is our story? Though created by our loving God, we have sinned and harmed ourselves, one another, and creation. Family of God, what is our story? While we were yet sinners, God sent Jesus to show us how to turn away from sin and toward the love of God. Family of God, what is our story? We carry the weight of the world and the word in our hearts, in hands, in our voices, proclaiming with our lives the good news of God God's love and the mercies of God's grace. Family of God, this is our story and our song. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our Old Testament scripture reading is from Psalm 51, the first through the 12th verse, NIV version. Have mercy on me, O God, According to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sin and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. The prayer of the day. One body, one spirit, one hope. One Lord, one faith, one baptism one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Take this patchwork collection of persons and quilt together your church. Like old pieces of cloth, take these words and songs and prayers, take our thoughts and inner thoughts and inner hungers and join them all together into a new and living fabric. The purpose of which is to cover and color your world, or at least our corner of it, with grace and love in Christ. Amen. God in community, holy in one, hear us as we pray as Jesus taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our New Testament reading is from Ephesians 4, 1 
through 16. Therefore, the prisoner in the Lord beg you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, hearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says, he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same who one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might feel all things. He himself granted that some are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from which and whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped. As each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. This is the word of God for the people of God. Today, I wanted to talk about maintaining the unity of the faith by building community and valuing one another, we can maintain the unity of faith. In a society that is becoming increasingly fragmented in which people seem more and more separated from one another, the church can and has always been seen as a refuge. The church and Vespers is more than a building. It's more than a Sunday morning, afternoon, or evening coming together meeting. And in some instances, for those of you who worship at your respective places of worship, it is a place where you come together not only on Sunday, some people go on Saturdays. I'd like to assert we are places of community, a place where people come together, a place where people care about one another and take care of one another, a place where every person matters, a place where if you don't show up, someone will notice. Here at Charter House Vespers, that's where we are. 
That's what we aspire to be, a community, and we don't just hope to be that. We take practical steps to make it a reality. Why? Because it says something important about who God is and who we are. We believe there is a problem with this world and the problem is sin. People who go their own way with no interest in God, people who do things that is contrary to God's design, hurting others and hurting themselves. That's sin and sin separates us from God and it separates us from one another. But those who trust in Jesus Christ as Savior have their sins forgiven. They receive power over sin, power to live according to God's design. And so instead of being alienated from God, they are brought into fellowship with him through Jesus Christ. This shared relationship with Jesus Christ brings us into relationship with one another. And so our community as a church demonstrates that what we claim to believe is true. That where sin has broken relationships, Christ restores them. Where sin has pulled people apart, Christ brings them together. That's what the church is or should be, a living portrait of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why community is so important. Today, we look at one more component of community, valuing one another. The main idea that I'm going to present is that we are to gain a right understanding of how much worth and value each person has. As we come to see each other the way God sees us, then we will gain an appreciation, I think, for one another. We will be thankful for one another. We will view one another as precious gifts from God to us. And that will strengthen love and build community. Your value is based on who you are. Let's look at the coins in respect to value, since it's the Olympics, okay? Gold coin. My value is not based on what I look like. Our commitment is to the Lord. It explores understanding, faithfulness, responding to God's call, and living a committed life, emphasizing faith, as seeing the invisible but existent divine truths. If they had been playing with the murderers, be less tragic. We are no doubt in the middle of the Olympics. So if I received a silver coin, my value is not based on what I know. What about the bronze coin? My value is not based on what I have. The copper coin, my value is not based on what I do. My value is based on who I am and I am a child of God. You are a child of God. The gold, the silver, the bronze, the copper medalist is a child of God if they ascribe to that. Your value is based on your worth right now. Sometimes the value of something is determined by the appraisal of an expert. Here is an example. Uh, at a local antique road show, an Alaskan whale hunting cap appraised at $50,000, an antique clock with a lot of sentimental value at $50. Who is more of an expert than God? Yet he considered us to be worth the cost of his own son. 
He exchanged his son's life for ours. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Romans 8.32 But even more, value comes from relationships. If one of your children were kidnapped, unfortunately, don't wish that on anyone, but what would you pay to get them back? I know there are some of you or some days that you probably will say, you know what? You can keep that kid. <laughs> but in all honesty, you will have to pay, you would pay anything. You would sell your house, sell your car, cash in your life insurance, empty the 401k, borrow money from friends and family. In short, you would give everything you own for your son or your daughter. And yet God gave that which was most precious to him, his own son for us. What does that say about your value and worth? What does that say about the value and worth of your husband or wife? What does that say about the value and worth of the person sitting next to you or in front of you or in your household? It says that you and I and every person who trusts in Christ are worth more to God than we can possibly imagine. What about them? You and I may not feel particularly valuable at times, but we are. The April 1996 auction of Kennedy Memorial memorabilia, the ultimate garage sale, the headline said, grossed 34.5 million. JFK's rocking chair sold for $442,500. A fake pearl necklace sold for $211,500. A set of golf clubs, just the wood, just the wood, $772,500. 13 pairs of salt and pepper shakers sold for $11,500. Those things had great value because of what people were willing to pay for them. You may feel about as valuable than an old beat up set of golf clubs or a used string of fake pearls. In the auction catalog, your estimated value will be $10 or even worthless. But when the auction begins, God says, that's one of my precious children. I'll bid anything, even the life of my son, if the value of something is what someone is willing to pay for it. Then we are of great value because Christ gave his only and own begotten son for us. I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. And what applies to you applies to every other follower of Jesus Christ. We see an old beat up Christian with a lot of wear and tear. God sees an immortal soul that was worth the price of his own son's life. Even the Christian we don't particularly get along with, the one who gets on our nerves, just being in the same room, the one that we consider to be backwards, uncouth, slow-witted, annoying, loud-mouthed, nincompoop, 
that person God paid for with his blood of his only son. That person is of, trust me, I know, I know, but that person is of immense value, I promise you, to God. And if we value them any less, if we value ourselves any less, we are saying that God made a mistake, that he paid too much, that he bid it too high. But God doesn't make any mistakes. His judgment is true and his valuations are correct. Your value is based on your potential. Three ways you and I know that you have value based on potential. One, God has invested himself in you. You don't train and educate someone who is hopeless when it comes to a particular area of expertise, fighter pilot, cardiac surgeon, tiger pitcher. God wouldn't give you his presence, his spirit, if there was no potential. Gifts of the spirit, disciple of his love, promise of his presence, fruits of the spirit. These are all proof positive of the hidden value he sees in me and in you. Number two, God has entrusted you with critical responsibility. Sharing the good news about his son. God has entrusted to us the most important work in the universe. He has commissioned every one of us as his representatives to tell the world the good news about Jesus Christ. Number three, to make known the gospel that brings eternal life and forgiveness of sins to anyone who believes. Can anything be more important than that? Yet God has entrusted this task to us, not to kings or presidents, not just to the educated or the wealthy, not just to the attractive or the highly capable, but to every one of us, not to angels, but to human beings. When we value one another, part of the work God has given us gets easy. Sharing your faith becomes a joy. Inviting friends to church is something you begin to want to do. The church then becomes something and the hottest thing in town. Why? Because the people are so great. They value each other just as God values them. And that is so different than the world. So whether it's here at Vespers or wherever you might worship outside of Vespers, invite a friend to go with so that they too can hear the good news and enjoy maintaining the unity of faith and community with others. Amen? Please receive this benediction. Beloved, may God bless you as you go from this place, carrying the word in your heart living the story we share with the saints of old and the saints of now as we break down barriers to communities and build up the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.